How are you this evening? You are fine. The harder they are better. I bless God that He has brought us once again this evening to the feet of the cross to learn from Him. I know that all this while you have been blessed. Have you been blessed all this while? Has God been blessing you through the messages you've been learning in this place? Mm-hmm. To God be the glory. All right. I would like to, before I continue, I would like someone to tell us the topic we considered last night. Is there anyone that is here that can remind us? Raise up your hand, let me see you. <laughs> so Okay, I thought I saw someone's hand there. Docas, Docas is closing herself up. <laughs> if I have a gift now, Docas will come and take it from me. <laughs> All right, is someone is someone ready to tell us the topic? Okay, um, Karen wants to tell us the topic. Karen, Karen, stand up and tell us the topic. Amen. Clap for her. Put your hands together for her. Mm-hmm. God bless you, Karen. Today is another night, my friends. And God is going to bring to us another important message from the Bible. But I want us to listen very carefully so that you will understand this message. It is a very important message that the devil has taken it upon himself to make sure that you will not understand it. But you must make sure that you will be on the Lord's side so that the devil will be defeated. Amen. So before we continue, I would like us to pray. Dear God in heaven, we thank you. We bless your holy name because it is time for us to study. Grant us understanding. Sharpen our intellect. Hide me behind the cross, dear Lord. That humanity will be diminished and will divinity will dominate. I ask that this very moment you grant me and my translator all trans, that not I or we will be seen, but Jesus will be seen, heard, and known. This I pray, believe you answered, for I asked in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Like we do often each night, we are going to begin our message with our watchword. That is taken from Psalms 119, stanza 105. Psalms 119, verse 105. So I will, I, will, I will count one, two, three. At the count of three, we will read it together. Are we ready? Yes. Are we ready? Yes. One, two, three. Is a lamb unto my feet and a light unto my path. Hallelujah. May the word of God be a light and a lamp unto your feet in the name of Jesus. My friends, today we are going to consider something that is very important. But before we do that, I would like us to take our Bible test from the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 2 and 3. The Bible says in Genesis, and on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. Friends, that is our Bible test, and our topic is the way back to divine rest. 
The white mark to the virus. Our world is a very busy world. Everyone, everywhere is busy doing one thing or the other. If something happened that in during the French Revolution, you know, God from the Bible tells us that we have six working days from the seventh day of rest. That was intentional so that man at some point after working for six days will have time to rest. But when man thought that they can alter what God had declared, they tried during the French Revolution to do what we have. Um, they created 10 working days, but animals, according to history, began to die. People cannot work with that kind of schedule. And so at some point it was changed. And God's own timeline began to work for us. From nature we can see that everything that we are, that is created is there and it was placed there by God Himself. If you try to alter or do something contrary from what God has placed in nature, you will have to suffer for it. Even scientists have discovered that there is a plant called prayer plant. Now they have realized that when it is sunrise, this plant will open up. When it is sunset, this plant will close up. And that is just the proof. That is just to prove that even nature obeys the commands of God. You know, we have seven days a week. The, the number seven is a perfect number. And there are many sevens in the Bible. We have seven days of week. Of the week. If you go to the book of Revelation, you will hear about the seven trumpets. You hear about the seven plagues. You hear about the seven seals. And a lot, a lot of sevens. Friends, what is it about the number seven? In the course of our lecture today, you are going to understand what that has to do but when you read the book of First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 1 and 2 Apostle Paul tells us something very important he said and I brethren when I came to you did not come with the excellence of speech Okay, and of wisdom declaring to you the testimony of God. He went ahead and said, For I am determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Jesus is the centrality of our Christian belief. Remove Jesus from our Christian faith then we have no faith. And so most of the times when people do what Jesus did not command them to do, then they are wasting their time worshipping Jesus. 
the Bible reveals to us. Do you remember the first night we learned about the Bible? We realized that the Bible is the written word of God that reveals the living word of God to us. And it is a very important book. That is why in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, the Bible says that all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. And it is profitable for doctrine and for reproof, for correction, for instruction. He said, for instruction in righteousness. That a man of God or a woman of God may be complete, totally equipped for every good work. Hallelujah. And so, if any good work is outside of the Bible, believe you me, that is not a good work. If you are a Christian and your practices are outside of the scriptures, then that is not Christianity. My friends, tonight I am going to take you through some certain scriptures so that you will understand what the Bible teaches when it has to do with worship. Remember that the Bible text we just read now say that the scripture is there to guide, to correct, to instruct in righteousness. When it says that a man of God will be totally equipped unto all good work, it means that every good work in quotes that is outside of the Bible is not a good work. The Bible went ahead to tell us in First Peter chapter 2, verse 21. He says, so to this you will accord. Yes, you are acting. Because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. Now, even before we go ahead to the next verse, I want you to know that this text is simply telling us that everything that you need to do as a Christian, Christ has given you the example. Now, what they can have on the time of is it a Christ suffer? Christ suffer. Leave it as an example that you should follow. I so I want to ask you, my friends. Do you think in your daily Christian life that you follow the examples of Jesus Christ? If, if you think you are following the examples of Jesus Christ, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Mm, I can see some people. God bless you for following Jesus. In Jesus' name. My friends, you see, the Bible says in First John chapter 2, verse 6. He who abides in him, that is in Jesus. Taught himself also to walk just as he walked. If you think that you abide in Jesus Christ, if you think that you believe in Jesus Christ, then you must have to walk just as Jesus walked. And so we are going to see how Jesus lived his life. Yes. Jesus was a perfect example for us. The book of Luke, chapter 6, verse 46, tells us this is a statement Jesus made to people who claim that they were followers of Jesus. 
You know, there are some people the Bible says that they have the form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. Now, to some people, such as that, Jesus is saying, But why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Why do you claim that you are Christians, but you have to not bring to see you in the scriptures? My friends, which day should Christian worship? Because this is a very important question we must have to answer tonight. You know, as a theology student back in school, I studied the world religion. I studied African traditional religion. I studied Buddhism. I studied Shintoism. I studied Islamic religion. I also studied Christian religion. See, why I believe in Christian religion, I realize that amongst all these world religions, and there are several of them, amongst all of these religion, it is Christianity that have a, a, a greater number of disagreements. In Christian world, Every religion has their disparity, their differences, their disagreements, but it is greater. It is greater and much more in Christianity. Some people worship on Sunday. I'm not going to church on Sunday. Let me see you. I'm not going to church on Sunday. Let me see you. So that heaven will bless you. Let me see you. Let me see you. Let me see you. Let me see you. Are you ready for God, for God to bless you? Like a, is it? Oh, everyone here, what day do you worship? Okay, how many of you go to church on Saturday? No, how many of you go to church on Saturday? No, 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 no. Not everyone is raising up their hands. Those of you who are not raising up your hands, who do you belong? <laughs> you, okay, how many of you worship on Tuesday? You go to church on Tuesday. <laughs> Alright, friends, you see, the truth is that not every one of us believes that we should worship the same day. Some people worship on Saturday. I don't believe that you should go to church on Sunday. I have, I have heard some people saying that it does not matter, you can just create your own Sabbath, it can even be on a Thursday. It does not just matter. But when you look at the life of Jesus, my friend, the Bible tells us what Jesus did and how he worshipped. According to the book of Luke, chapter 4 verse 16, the Bible says that Jesus, he came to Nazareth where he has been brought up and as his custom was. As his custom was. You know, back in primary school, they talk about the meaning of custom. And, and they say that custom, custom is people's way of life. So substituting this definition into that very Bible text, the Bible is saying as Jesus' way of life is. He enters into the synagogue on a Sabbath day. It was his habit. This was what Jesus did often. He enters into the synagogue on a Sabbath day. Not on a Sunday. Not on a Tuesday. It was what he was trained to do. And as he grew up, he studied the scriptures and that had a conformity with the scriptures. But it, 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 is, it is unfortunate that we claim, and the Bible says that Jesus is the same today 
Yes, today and forever. Yet we claim that Jesus has one certain test on the cross. My friend, you see, the truth is that actually Jesus nailed some things to the cross. But he did not nail the seventh day Sabbath to the cross. People claim that the Sabbath has been changed. But the question is, how then could there be a change when Jesus remained the same forever? The Bible tells us in the book of Mark, chapter 2, verse 27 and 28. Jesus speaks and he says, he said to them, yeah. the Sabbath was made from man and not man for the Sabbath. Yeah. The Sabbath was, was made for you to enjoy and not you was made for the Sabbath. He continued to say in verse 28, he said, Therefore the Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath. The Sabbath belongs to Jesus Christ. It does not belong to you. And so when you want to observe the Sabbath, you will do it according to the dictates and principle of the owner. The Bible teaches us that the seventh day Sabbath is a sign for the creative power of God. The Sabbath is a memorial of creation. From when we took our Bible test, we realized that God created the heavens and the earth in six days and rested on the seventh day. Now, if you do not observe the seventh day with which God rested on, then you are, you are, if you remove it out of the way, then there is nothing more to show that God created the heavens and the earth. Talking about the Sabbath, in the book of Exodus chapter 31, verse 16 and 17, the Bible says, Therefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generation. Throughout their generation. My friends, the Bible says as a perpetual covenant. It is a perpetual covenant. Something that must last forever and ever. It, no matter what you do, it will never change. Come on, somebody say amen for Jesus. It will never change. It will remain forever and ever. Yeah. Look at what the Bible says. He said that it is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. You know, my friends, when 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 the children of um Israel, when the Jews stoned Stephen, that should be about AD twenty-seven. The gospel was the gospel was taken to the Gentiles. That is AD thirty-four. Sorry for the mistake. Now the gospel was taken to the Gentiles. And from then, there was nothing like children of Israel being God's people. Now, we all who we are Gentiles became spiritual Israelites. Many people claim that this commandment was strictly given to the children of Israel. Now, 
But you see, my friends, when the children of Israel were given a chance to amend their ways, they did not do that. And so they do not enjoy that special privilege again. Whatever God, whatever covenant God made with them, through Abraham, we can all enjoy the same covenant. That is why the Bible said that is neither Jew nor Gentile anymore. The only, the only, the only thing that made the Jews special, according to the book of Romans chapter chapter three, from verse one and two, is that they were just the receivers and oracle. The Bible used the word oracle, the recipients of the gospel, that through them the rest of the world will get the gospel. But they did not utilize that privilege properly. And so, my friends, this commandment or this covenant is perpetual not just for the Jews, but for you and I who are in Africa. For the Bible says that the Lord made the heavens in, 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 in six days. In six days, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. He said in Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 20, friends. He said, Hang on, shut up. And there will be a sign between me and you. That you may know that I am the Lord your God. One of the, the one of the important signs that proves that you are a child of God is that you must have to honor the Sabbath of God. Are we following? Are we following? If you are following, say hello. Hello. If you are following, say hi. Hi. The importance of the Sabbath cannot be overestimated, my friend. It is a sign that identifies you as God's person and God's people. That is why the Bible says, Hello, my Sabbath, Jesus was speaking. So that it will be a sign between you and me. You know, just as people get married and they wear rings to show that they have been born together, they have been, they are joined together in a holy matrimony. The Sabbath for the Christians is a sign that joins you and Jesus Christ together. That is what the Bible is saying, my friends. That is what the Bible is saying. Yes. But because people do not take time to study the scriptures, they overlook these things. And you know what the Bible says? That in vain do they worship me. This is for doctrine the commandment of men. When we read about Bible text in the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 2 from verse 2 and 3. There are three things that the Bible tells us was done on the Sabbath. Three things were done on the Sabbath. Number one is that the Sabbath was sanctified. Now, the sanctification means to set something apart for a holy use. God sanctified the Sabbath. He did not sanctify Sunday. 
He sanctified Sabbath. He did not sanctify Wednesday. He did not sanctify Thursday. It was only the seventh day Sabbath that God sanctified. You know, just like when people get married, if you get married today as a man or as a woman, he would not allow someone to come and collect that your wife or your husband and give you another person. You did not pay the bride price for. Just as that is impossible, it is also impossible for you to change the Lord's Sabbath. I, I, I don't understand what I'm saying. It is impossible for you to change the Lord's Sabbath. God has seen it. And to remain that way. If you read the book of Exodus chapter 16, my friends, something important happened in that portion of the scripture. Portion of the scripture. The Bible teaches us that when the children of Israel were still in the wilderness coming back from um, Egypt, the Bible says that they hungered, they were hungry. And God gave them manna. However, God gave them an instruction on how they are to eat the manna. First of all, the manna will have to be fallen once every day, beginning from Sunday. On Sunday, they will go out, they will find the manna. On Monday, the same thing. On Tuesday, the same thing. But when it gets to Friday, they will not have to pick once again. Now, what happens was that when they eat the man, when they pick the manna on an ordinary day like Thursday or Wednesday, what will happen is that they will finish everything that day. They will not have to keep it to the following day. God gave them that instruction because he told them that the following day another manna will fall. But my friend, when he got to Friday, God gave them a new instruction. And that instruction was that they are not to pick once again. They are to pick the one that will serve them both on Friday and the one that will serve them the following day, which is Sabbath. Many of them who disregarded the structures of God fell victim. They thought that a man, another man will fall on Sabbath. They went out to the field, but they did not see any man. Now, God intentionally did that so that the Sabbath will be consecrated and that the Sabbath will be properly kept by the children of Israel. My friends, God did all of these things so that through it we can learn from the children of Israel. God was not happy when the children of Israel went out to the field to look for manna, even on the Sabbath. That is the same way God does not want us to do our regular businesses on the Sabbath. It is supposed to be a day that you and I will come down and worship at Jesus' feet. My friend, people still argue, and so we are going to use the Easter weekend to make you understand that Saturday is the Sabbath. You know, you know um, most of the calendars you buy in the market does not always begin on Sunday. 
There are some calendars that begin on Monday. And so that keeps people in, in, in confusion. When you get a calendar that begins on Monday as the first day of the week, that makes Sunday being this to become the seventh day. But we must have to use the Bible to understand the right day, to know the first day and to know the seventh day. You know, the Bible did not use the names we use today for the days of the week. It is, it is only the recent Good News Bible written by the Catholic Church that names the days according to what we call them today. Every other Bible translation calls it the first day of the week, second day of the week, third day of the week, and that is the way it has been. And now you know the Bible tells us that the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord. Are you, are you following? If you are following, wave up your hand, let me see. Aha, uh -huh. God bless you, God bless you. Now, which day is the seventh day? Now, I want to ask you a question. There is this thing called Easter. We celebrate it every April. During Easter, it is believed that Jesus died on which day of the week? Somebody should answer. Which day of the week do we believe that Jesus died? Friday, God bless you. Friday, and we call that day the Good Friday. Now, talking about that day called Friday, the Bible tells us in the book of Luke, chapter 23, verse 54. It says that that day was the preparation and the Sabbath drew on. So Friday, which is the day Jesus was crucified, the Bible says that it was the preparation day. So the question is, what were they preparing for? The truth is that they were preparing for the Sabbath. That is why the Bible says that the Sabbath drew on. Now let us go to the real story of what happened in that day. In verse 55, the Bible says that the women which came with him from Galilee followed after him. They, be, they beheld the sepulchre, that is, they beheld the tomb where Jesus was buried. They saw how his body was laid. That same Friday. Now the Bible says in verse 56, then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. Now these ointments or spices can also mean the embalmment. You know, when someone dies, most of the time the body is embalmed to keep that person for some time. But then when they went to get the preparation of the spices and the ointment, the Bible says that they rested the Sabbath day according to the commandment. Mm -hmm. Now remember that that day was a preparation day. 
and we know that that preparation day was the Sabbath. Was, it was Friday. The Bible says that the Sabbath grew on. This you know, saw how the body was, of Jesus was laid in the grave. They went back to prepare some environment or some spices. But the Bible said they did not return because they, they saw that the Sabbath has entered and they remained and kept the Sabbath according to the commandment that we learned last night. How many of you, how many of you remember the fourth commandment? Well, I read it one after the other that last night. How many of you can remember the fourth commandment? Hello? Are you shy? Alright, someone should stand up and tell us what the fourth commandment says. Does Dukas want to help us? How many of us can remember what the fourth commandment said? Mm-hmm, I am okay, Dukas want to tell us. Dukas, stand up and tell us what the fourth commandment says. Amen. God bless you, Dukas. In fact, the Lord will promote you in all ramifications of your life in the name of Jesus. Come on, let's have the ladder. Amen for Dukas. Amen. Amen. I don't know why you're laughing, but I know it's a good thing. Yeah, it's a good thing. Huh? Uh-huh. The Bible says. The Bible says that the Sabbath day. That is, that is what you have in the fourth commandment. The Sabbath day, remember the Sabbath to keep it holy, is the fourth commandment. And the Bible says that this woman kept the, or the women that come from Galilee with Jesus, kept the commandment according to the way it is. Now we have seen Friday and that has gone. We have seen Sabbath and that has gone. Now, the next portion, which is chapter 24, verse 1, the Bible categorically stated by saying, Upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came into the sepulchre, bringing the spices that they have prepared. And then the Bible says that when they saw, when they got to that place, they realized that the tomb has been, that the tomb has been opened and Jesus was not in that place. And so according to the book of Luke chapter 24 verse 1, we realize that Sunday is the first day of the week and that was the day Jesus was resurrected from the world. Now, my friends, if Sunday is the first day of the week, that means that automatically Saturday is not a seventh day. And another portion of the scripture that clearly tells us what which day is the first day or which day Jesus was resurrected is the book of Mark chapter 16 verse 9. The Bible says now very early on Sunday morning or very early on first day of the week when Jesus was resurrected to prove that the day Jesus was resurrected was the first day and we all know that the day Jesus was resurrected was his Sunday even till today. Amen. And so looking at the order of things, we see that Friday is the preparation day. Saturday is the Sabbath day. And Sunday is the first day of the week with Jesus resurrected. The Bible tells us that the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God, my friends. My friends, 
Saturday or Sabbath worship was instituted just before sin. It was not. It was not an afterthought. It was introduced by God Himself even before Adam and Eve sinned. Friends, that is to tell you that it it is a good thing for us to keep the Sabbath. Believe you me, people all over the world are happy and they are doing it by keeping the seven days. They remain blessed, my friend. On another part of the world, people who are really waiting for the second coming of Christ when you keep the Sabbath day holy, your life will never remain the same. I hear what I'm saying. Your life will not remain the same. Don't listen to people who say that the Sabbath is a Jewish Sabbath. The Bible calls it the Sabbath of the Lord. It was introduced before the children of Israel even came to Sinai. It was written by the very finger of God. Listen, let me tell you, my friends. There are three major places the hand of God wrote in the entire scripture. Beginning from the last, we see Jesus writing the sins, or something, actually the Bible didn't mention what Jesus was writing. You remember there was a woman who was caught in adultery or fornication, and people brought her to Jesus and said, this woman was caught in adultery. What do you say we should do to her? Now the Bible tells us that Jesus knelt down and began to write something on The Bible didn't tell us, but what we knew is that as the people saw whatever he wrote, they dropped their stones and they left. That was, that was the last. Now the second time a God, the hand of God wrote in the Bible was in the book of Daniel. When Bethsazer, a son of Nebuchadnezzar, took the utensils taken from um, the, the, the temple of Jerusalem and was mourning with it, the Bible says that a hand wrote, Mene Mene Tekel of Asen, and that day was the end of the kingdom. Now the first and the most important part time when God wrote with his finger is when he wrote the Ten Commandments. Now listen, to tell you that it is very important, that thing that he wrote was very important. Even when Moses out of anger threw the Ten Commandments at the at the foot of the mountain and broke it into pieces. God still told him. Now your punishment is that you are going to bring another two tablets of stone and this time I'm still going to write again. So twice God wrote the Ten Commandments with his hands. You don't want to joke with the Ten Commandments, my friend. Even the Jews still today still observe the seventh day Sabbath. Because they know that the Sabbath should be kept. My friends, when the Jews disobeyed God by breaking the Sabbath, they were sent into captivity. By breaking the Sabbath, that one is enough for you to be thrown into hell. 
Yule ndao mmoja naamu kwa Satani kagonja direct express kwa sababu Jesus kept the Sabbath my friend. Yesu ni mwagwaje sababu. The disciples of Jesus kept the Sabbath. Ah maneno ya Yesu mwagwaje sababu. All of those who have been listening and following Jesus including apostle Paul kept the Sabbath. Kwa hiyo mmoja wa Biblia ona Paul wa ni kiongozi mwingi wa Sabbath. And the Bible tells us that it was the custom of Jesus to worship on the Sabbath. Kwa maana kama sasa hivi na mtu wa Yesu kule ni Sabbath. Acts of Apostles chapter 17 verse 2 also tells us that this it was a the custom and the manner of Apostle Paul to worship on the Sabbath. Do you have the entire New Testament there are only eight mentions of the first day of the week and none we are connected to observance of the Sabbath. My friends, God's people must be ready to imbibe and practice what is written in the scriptures. There are plenty and numerous mentions of the Sabbath and the entire scripture, and all of them tells us that it is the day that God wants us to worship Him. At no point in the scripture did the Bible ever suggest that the day of worship was changed. And you know what makes me happy about the Sabbath? It is that even in the new heaven and in the new earth, Christians, those who want to follow Jesus, will also keep the Sabbath. How do I know? How do I know that that should be done? The Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah, chapter 66, verse 22 and 23. Now, I did not include 22, but I will have to read it off half. The Bible said that as for the new heaven and the new earth, which I will make, shall a man, so shall your soul. Amen. The new heaven and the new earth, which I will make. Now, I want to ask you this question. Has God created a new heaven now? Can we see the new heaven? I, I, can, I can hear anyone answering me. Can we see the new heaven? Can we see the new earth? That is to show that it is still in the future. Now, the Bible continues in verse 23. Do remember, do not separate 22 from verse 23. It is, it is still one statement. The Bible says that it shall come to pass in that new heaven and new earth that from one new moon to another new moon, from one Sabbath to another Sabbath, that all flesh, all flesh, come on, how many, how many is included in all flesh? Every single thing that God has created, every human, all flesh, the Bible says, shall come to watch it before me. Somebody say, Hallelujah. Yeah. Our flesh should come to before the Lord to worship. Yeah. My friends, yeah. the Bible says yeah. Yeah. in First Peter chapter two, verse twenty-one and twenty-two. Yeah. Says, for this, for to this you were called. We read this before when we started. So to this you were called. That because Jesus also suffered for us, leaving us an example, that we should follow his footsteps. Who committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth. My friends, are you ready? to do what Jesus wants you to do. You see, it does not matter how long you have been doing the thing that is wrong. Do you know it? 
it, it does not matter if you are getting to hear the truth about the Sabbath today for the first time. I know many of you are saying, ah, this, we are hearing this for the first time. Does it mean that Sunday is not the day we should go to church? Yes, the truth is that Sunday is not the day you should worship. The day you are to go to church according to the Bible is the Sabbath, my friend. That is the day you are to worship. Saturday. Saturday. My friends, I want to ask you a question. And I want you to answer from your heart. How many of you love Jesus? Raise up your hand. How many of you love Jesus? Now keep, keep it up there. Keep it up there. So that, so that the angels of heaven will take record that you love Jesus. Now while your hand is up there, how many of you would like to obey God by keeping the seventh day Sabbath? To our friends now, to our friends now, how many of you would like to obey God by keeping the seventh day Sabbath, by worshiping God on the right day of worship? If you are here, stand up to your feet. Stand up to your feet. Stand up to your feet. You want to worship God on the right day of worship. The day of Jesus said we should worship Him. Don't stand up because other people are standing. Hallelujah. Amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. My friends, I want to make this call only to those of our friends who do not worship before on the Sabbath day. You are here. You are here. You used to worship on other days before. But upon hearing this message to tonight, you are saying, from now, from now onwards, I will worship God the way He said we should worship Him in the Bible. By going to church on Saturday, which is the Sabbath day. You are here. Come, come and join me here. Come. Our friends, please do not be ashamed. I want you to take this step of faith. You see, the Bible tells us in the book of Matthew chapter 10 verse 33. That those who are ashamed to declare the name of Jesus in the public, Jesus will as well be ashamed of them. But if you want for Jesus to declare your name publicly, then you must as well be bold enough to declare the name of Jesus in the public. I know you have stood up, but I want you to take an extra step of faith. Come and join me here. Come and join. Please, please, do not hesitate. Do not, do not, do not be discouraged. You want from now onwards to be worshiping on the Sabbath day, which is the day that Jesus says we should worship. Come, come. I am waiting for you. Please come. Come, come. Let me pray for you. Come, let me pray for you. Do not be ashamed. This is a matter of life and death, my friends. It is very important that you take this step of faith. Please come. Come, let me pray for you. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. God bless you. I have decided to follow Jesus. Come, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided 
to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. You take the whole world and give me Jesus. You take the and give me Jesus, you send a heart, and give me Jesus, I'm satisfied, I'm satisfied, hallelujah. Oh, my friends, you see, there is joy in heaven for those who have decided to worship God in the right day. God bless you, God bless you, people of God, for deciding to worship God in the right day. God will never forsake you. I know there are some of us who are already standing, but for one reason or the other, you are ashamed. You want to be like Nicodemus. You do not want to stand here. Don't worry, there is no challenge. After now, we will have some time to discuss with you. And you, are, and you are free to ask us any question. But I want you to know that now is the time to make up our mind to follow Jesus. As you do that, as you do that, the Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father Lord in heaven, I thank you so much for this night. You have pre- allowed us to hear the words the way it is in the scriptures. And I bless your name because you answered our prayers by granting us the ability to comprehend the teaching of tonight. And hallelujah, some people have decided that they will continue, that they will from now on forth obey you by worshiping on the Sabbath day, the way you say we should worship. May your name be highly exalted. For the Lord, for those of us who are still in the valley of indecision, I ask them to make up, help them to make up their mind. Those that have decided already, I ask them by your power, their God, that you allow them to remain steadfast in what they have decided to do. Be with us this night, dear God. Set forth your Holy Spirit to continue to trouble and to stir our spirit to do what is right, even as we lay to rest this night. Continue to be with us, dear God, in heaven. As we go tonight, I ask that you live safely back home and bring us back here tomorrow evening that at the end of everything we have a cause to glorify your name. Be that result that I can touch into blaze because I know you have answered even more than we've asked of you for you pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let God people shout a louder amen. amen. Shout a louder amen. Amen. Amen and amen. 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 amen.